brand is like a person. Many of them are using ESG practices that don't even relate to the business segment that they're in. Consumers today want brands to do more than just sell them stuff. ESG is not so much about what to do, it's about what to avoid. So it's not so much a matter of cost, it's a matter of intent. Greenwashing is one of the biggest impediments to uh, ESG. So if a, a Vietnamese client here in Vietnam asks you to help them greenwash, what would you say to them? They've lost the game. Hello, hello, welcome to uh, the Quokan Show podcast. I'm Quokan, your host. Today, we want to talk about um, some of the buzzwords nowadays that we are seeing in a lot of conference and events. ESG, uh, sustainability, or green, and we're going to talk about it uh, from a brand perspective. Uh, my honor today to welcome a gentleman who's been doing branding for 50 years of his life and nearly 30 years in Vietnam. Um, one of the pioneers of integrated marketing communications, the founder of Richard Moore Associates. It's my pleasure to welcome Mr. Richard Moore. It's my pleasure Thank you so to be much. here. Thank How you so you? much for inviting me. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> You've been back and forth between the US and Vietnam and uh, it's such a pleasure for me to welcome you this time before the Christmas break. Just thank you so much. <laughs> You've been doing this for 50 years, branding strategy, and uh, nearly 30 years in Vietnam. How do you see the practice of branding strategy evolve over many, many years? Well, uh, when I first began, it was called uh, corporate identity. Yeah. Uh, and it was mainly about uh, design, uh, coming up with a consistent, impactful design that was extended through all the media. Hmm. Uh, it's when it uh, became strategy-based that it became a lot more effective. Uh, and then it's called, been called uh, brand image rather than uh, mm -hmm. corporate. And uh, I think that strategy, especially here in uh, Vietnam, the strategy part of it is uh, what has made a lot of difference. Uh, prior to that, companies thought that brand identity was a logo type. <laughs> uh, and uh, that logo, it does require a logo type and mm -hmm. it requires consistent application of logo and brand color and brand typeface mm -hmm. uh, and brand format, uh, style of photography, all those different things uh, that can be chosen in a way that fits the persona of a mm. brand, seeing a brand as if it's a, an individual person. Uh, that's all important. But if you don't have a strategy to begin with, and if a strategy isn't uh, founded on uh, true points of difference of mm. your brand from others, uh, then uh, even if it's consistent, mm. uh, it uh, may not be doing you much benefit. So I think that's the biggest thing that ha has happened in branding, uh, especially in Vietnam, is recognition that uh, it's not enough just to have a logo. Mm. Uh, it has to be a logo that somehow communicates something about uh, the brand itself. Mm -hmm. And all of the applications of that logo, the way it's applied, uh, needs to as well. After many years talking to clients here in Vietnam, do you see a change in mindset when doing brand strategy? Yes, because they understand uh, more about it. Many of them understand their need, that there needs to be a, a strategy. They don't know exactly how to go about it. Mm. Uh, and so they hire guys like me <laughs> to, to help them with that. Uh, and uh, we usually work only with the top echelon uh, of a company because they're the only ones who really know uh, what the long-term strategy of the company is. Mm -hmm. uh, and so it's usually at that upper echelon that we're talking to, yeah. to the leaders. And now here it comes the burst wars, the rising trends of ESG, yeah. the ESG integration with the brand strategy. Um, when does this happen um, for now in, in Vietnam? It hasn't happened yet. ESG mm. has happened. Uh, mm. uh, most uh, companies don't know much about uh, ESG. Mm. Uh, environment, society, governance, governance in the sense of uh, uh, governance within the company. 
some are very progressive, like FPT, for example, is a company that has really done a good job with, uh, mm-hmm. with uh, ESG. They, they use all three of those uh, areas, and they do it very skillfully. But most companies don't. But in the world, like like outside of Vietnam, that's been practicing and talking about it for, for many years, I yeah, guess. Yeah, since uh, uh, I think it was 2006, the United Nations published a, uh, uh, a report that was aimed at the uh, financial markets mm. entitled, Who Cares Wins? Mm. And uh, it was about that same time, and I would imagine preceding it, which gave the UN the idea that this is a good thing. Uh, the financial markets had pretty much determined that if they found evidence uh, in, the, uh, in their analysis of a company, mm. uh, that they were uh, concerned about the environment enough to really do something about it, mm. uh, if they cared about uh, the society uh, in which they do business, mm. local communities and so forth, uh, and uh, even within their own organization, if they were progressive in uh, the governance mm. uh, of the uh, policies uh, in the corporation for their own employees, mm-hmm. if they found those three factors prevalent, guess what? Those companies were more profitable. Mm. And so their price earnings ratio is better. Okay. Uh, so the ESG was really started uh, from the financial markets. And what's pushing it today is the standardization of ESG and the ability to uh, have standard ratings of it. Hmm. You mentioned uh, greenwashing. Yeah. Uh, that's uh, <laughs> a big reason why the financial community hmm. uh, wants uh, hard facts in order to know uh, that uh, ESG activities are, are hmm. real. Yeah. So ESG has a lot of differences comparing to CSR and CSV. It is very easy to get confused with yeah. the definition. So from, from a brand perspective, how do you understand ESG? Well, uh, it is those three aspects. Hmm. Uh, ESG has not been so closely related with branding yet. Hmm. Uh, this is uh, something new in the, uh, the branding field. It's totally new in, in Vietnam. I, I, Vietnamese companies have actually been practicing some part of ESG for a long time. When I first came here, I was impressed with the amount of charitable work that uh, Vietnamese companies do. Mm. And of course, it makes uh, perfect logic because it's it's a socialist country uh, and uh, you're expected to do something like Mm. that. Uh, The other aspects, caring for the environment, not so much. Mm. Uh, Caring about internal governance, (laughs) uh, not exactly so much uh, either. So where it's uh, lagging in uh, Vietnam over many other countries is in the coordination of, uh, of those three areas, balancing them mm. somehow. There was a, a report published by uh, uh, PwC uh, the summer of this year, mm. uh, which described the number of companies in their survey. And the survey was uh, over 200 companies, uh, and they were mixed from uh, the type of company they were uh, whether state-owned or, or uh, you know, private, uh, the size of the company, mm. uh, they included uh, SMEs, and the business segments that they were in. So it was kind of a broad uh, view. Yeah. Uh, and uh, they learned that 80% of the company said that they were planning mm. uh, to uh, implement ESG. Just planning. Just planning. <laughs> but uh, some of them were, you know, those yep. were short-term plans. They mm. were interested in it and they were doing something about it. But as they probed uh, deeper in their study, they found that it was more of a wait and see attitude because when they analyze all of the different factors that are mm. necessary in order to uh, implement ESG, many of them are, are missing. Mm. Uh, one other thing in that report that uh, interested me was uh, the SME segment uh, of uh, family owned businesses. Mm. Uh, they found that uh, 40% uh, of those businesses were actively doing something about ESG or in the planning stages of it. Mm. So this tells me that the younger generation, as usual, is uh, doing something new, and they they care about making s- sustainability mm. a part of uh, of their their family business. That's a good sign. Yeah, I'm glad to to hear that. So, what are some of the um, first steps for? Uh, Vietnamese companies, if they want to, let's say, integrating ESG factors into their branding strategy? Well, first of all, they need the strategy. 
Hmm. Uh, that, that is the first step. As we've uh, been working on this, we think that there are three steps, and that's the beginning step. Hmm. In order to have ESG ben uh, benefit your branding strategy, you have to have a branding strategy. And the second step, then, is to um, do a better job of choosing the ESG practices uh, that you care to engage in. Mm. And by, by that, I mean choosing ESG practices that have something to do with your brand strategy. Mm. That's new. There, uh, even in um, uh, Western countries, I don't think that's a prevalent concept yet. But uh, we think it, uh, it should be. And that's what, we've been, that's what we've been working on. You know, lack of knowledge is, uh, is a big factor. Many of them are using ESG practices that don't even relate to the business segment that they're in. Greenwashing is one of the biggest impediments to uh, ESG. People of the world don't believe companies that say they're doing something even when they're doing something. What are the biggest challenges of doing that? Because it's something new, right? Because it's something new, uh, not many people know uh, know about ESG, and therefore they don't know about relating ESG to uh, to brand strategy. Uh, ESG knowledge is still misunderstood. Companies don't know enough about it hmm. uh, to make a decision that's going to cost them a lot of money. You know, lack of knowledge is uh, is a big factor hmm. in what's uh, preventing them. There are other factors as well. Greenwashing uh, is a factor. Another factor that we feared at first uh, turns out not to be, and that is uh, standardization. Uh, back to the uh, financial aspects of uh, ESG, uh, a big movement about that is um, uh, standardization hmm. uh, and able to be able to analyze what a company is really doing with ESG and rate it somehow. Uh, standardization uh, is uh, growing uh, a lot. There are rating systems for it. Uh, competitive rating systems for it. Mm. Two years ago, in 2020, uh, the World Economic Forum in uh, Davos, Switzerland, yeah. uh, agreed uh, mm. that there should be uh, a, a, a clear standard for ESG. In the following year, uh, 120 of the top uh, companies in the world agreed on uh, 21 different uh, ESG practices uh, and uh, clarifying what they are really doing. Uh, so those those are very clear cut uh, standards that exist in the uh, uh, the marketplace right now. Where this is leading to, it's kind of like uh, many many years ago, there was no common reporting of uh, finances. Mm. And nowadays, uh, for a long time, there's been very strict regulations about the way you report your finances for tax purposes and, and for uh, uh, many other purposes. Uh, ESG is headed in that same direction. So now and it's come to the way we report ESG. Yes, there will be there will be KPIs and so forth about reporting it. And this, from a branding perspective, mm -hmm. this is a concern for me. Uh, oh. it, because standardization is exactly the opposite. Uh, of differentiation. So if brands are going to be conducting ESG uh, uh, practices that are standard, mm. like their taxes, mm -hmm. uh, it's not going to do the brand much good. Uh, no mm. brand makes a big deal about how they uh, honestly pay their taxes. Mm. It's sure. expected of all, all brands. Yeah. Uh, if ESG uh, really gets to that point, uh, it will be of uh, no more value. In order to find out uh, whether that <laughs> standardization is really there or not, we conducted our own research. We selected uh, nine of the uh, biggest business segments. Mm. Uh, we looked at about uh, half a dozen uh, annual financial reports of uh, the biggest companies in that, international companies. Mm. And we found that they're eager to talk about uh, their ESG. Mm. Uh, all of the ESG things they're doing, they really want to bring out. Yeah. Why? Because investors know mm -hmm. that if they're doing that, better chance the, that they're, they're a profitable company. Yeah. So uh, it's easy to find uh, what, a, what a corporation is doing by looking at their annual reports. And some of them even uh, uh, produce a separate report that's purely on uh, ESG, or they may call it sustainability, but all those three factors are, mm. uh, are in there. And what we were looking for is clusters where all of uh, those companies were using the same uh, methodologies. Mm. Very little consistency. 
So what we found so far is that the ESG practices are not skillfully chosen from the point of view of brand strategy. In fact, many of them are using ESG practices that don't even relate to the business segment that they're in. Mm, how does that happen? I think it's fr from the history of uh, ESG practice in Vietnam, mm -hmm. mainly uh, CSR, yep. right? They're used to that. Uh, mm -hmm. They're used to doing good in, in that particular area. And they talk about it. Mm -hmm. You know, if a company, a, v a Vietnamese company uh, does some sort of uh, CSR or CSV, they will promote it, usually in a not, not a highly coordinated way, mm -hmm. uh, usually through social media and mm -hmm. not uh, paid media. Mm -hmm. uh, but they, they, they're doing some of it. In order for ESG to function uh, as a real contributor for branding, uh, it also has to have this third component, branding strategy, the relating of uh, ESG practices to their particular brand strategy, mm. and lastly, communicating it. Sure. So environment, social, and governance, Yes. W what seem to be the factor that the, the Vietnamese company lack of the most? Uh, what's interesting. Uh, the Vietnamese companies, according to that uh, uh, PwC report, about 60% of them answered that the top priority for them was governance. Mm. Uh, governance was the, the least popular of mm. the three. Vietnamese businessmen are very savvy. <laughs> <laughs> and they know that unless that there's uh, an acceptance at the top uh, from government, Mm. Uh, and uh, smaller businesses, if uh, there's not a leader out there doing strong ESG, uh, they're a little reluctant to, you know, to take the plunge themselves. Mm. So uh, they recognize that uh, governance uh, has to be in place. The governance uh, becomes better in terms of uh, uh, a company's uh, practices. They'll move on to the environment. They'll move on to where well, they're already there in society. Mm -hmm. They'll be more open to do those other things because governance is not only about uh, the way a company has its policies. It's pretty much equated with the other ESG practices mm -hmm. as well. It's kind of a core wanting to do something good. So I guess uh, governance is the part where we have most limitation on. Uh, but that's going to change. Mm. Uh, one of the reasons why it's going to change uh, is that uh, last year in the uh, uh, European Union, they passed very strict uh, ESG uh, regulation with key points uh, of rating. Mm. And included in their uh, ESG uh, requirements is the supply chain. Mm. Guess who supplies Europe with a lot of stuff, mm. a lot of components? Yeah. Vietnam. The ESG regulations are for the entire product of the company. All the supply chain okay. back to Vietnam has to conform with the same regulations, not different regulations, the same regulations uh, as uh, for the European Union. And that means that uh, many of the businesses in uh, Vietnam that are producing components mm. are going to be uh, ESG savvy because mm -hmm. they must, and that may be the tipping point of uh, where a lot of other Vietnamese uh, companies that are not necessarily producing uh, components for Europe uh, mm -hmm. are getting the idea that this has to, uh, this has to happen. Yep. You talk about standardization and the measurement and the KPI, the rating, the report. In Vietnam, if the company is doing ESG, uh, how, how do they get measurement? How do they get ratings? They don't. It's what S&P is doing. Mm. On some level, there are rating systems by uh, the leading accounting firms and maybe smaller accounting firms as well. Mm. Uh, I, I don't know. Uh, I know that uh, it's a big deal with uh, the large firms. I don't know how thoroughly small, mm. smaller accounting firms are, mm. are doing that. I would imagine that there would be some resistance because the corporations themselves are not doing that. <laughs> and if they're being rated, yeah. uh, and that rating has something to do with uh, taxation or sure. government policy or something, then uh, mm. uh, they may not be too anxious to, uh, to have the, those, those ratings quite yet. Uh, you mentioned greenwash many times, and I guess um, that is a popular thing happening in Vietnam when people just talk about it or doing just for the branding. Okay, we're doing ESG, we're doing sustainability, we're going green just for the branding purpose, but we're not actually doing it. Yeah. How, how do we spot out things like that? How do 
I mean, from a brand perspective. Well, first of all, don't feel so bad about it. Okay. Because this is prevalent all over the world. Yeah. Uh, greenwashing is one of the biggest impediments to uh, ESG. One of the most difficult ways uh, is just the use of imagery. Mm. Not saying we are doing this, it's mm. just giving the impression. Uh, we in the branding business know how to give an impression, mm. right? So we have to really watch ourselves. You know, as my company is uh, uh, developing uh, services uh, related to ESG, we really have to be careful about not uh, supporting anyone that has greenwashing in, mm. in mind. Take a, uh, a water company, for example. A mm. uh, bottle of water probably has some kind of images on it about natural Almost. waterfalls <laughs> or something, right? Yeah. Uh, and it may be pure water, but it's not from uh, a well. No. <laughs> uh, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, uh -huh. Pure water is very, very necessary. Uh, but those same companies uh, are contributing to an enormous uh, mess in the oceans from mm. plastics that are, uh, you know, causing problem with, uh, with fish and all, all other kinds of aquatic life. Many of those water companies are not doing anything at all uh, to support uh, the science of doing something about that. Mm. So that's, a, I, th I think, uh, brands that are using photography and illustration and the color green <laughs> especially mm. uh, to give an impression that, they're really, that they really care, uh, they're part of one kind of uh, uh, greenwashing. Mm. Uh, another is uh, where uh, the company may talk about something they're doing uh, that is valid, mm. Uh, but uh, they're doing it as kind of a cover and not talking about uh, mm. what they're doing that's not. Yeah. Packaging, for example. Yep. A lot of packaging mm. uh, is uh, produced uh, with uh, uh, renewable resources. Mm -hmm. It's recycled. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. But what's in the package? <laughs> there, there may not be any conversation about that. And there's a lot of vague terms. Mm. Uh, that are used, uh, you know, eco-friendly and uh, things like that, that don't have any any real standards uh, for measurement. That's mm. quite proper. But that do have an effect on consumers' perspective when we're looking at, you know, advertising and branding yeah. uh, messages. Right. So I'm guessing you're saying greenwashing is something kind of normal. You know, what is the consequence of, of doing that? I mean, in the long term? The, the consequence of that in the long term is those good things about in the environment, about society, about a better workplace, they're slower to take place. That's what the problem is. There was a survey last year uh, in uh, Britain, uh, just with shoppers. Mm -hmm. uh, asking about uh, uh, what they thought of uh, uh, greenwashing. Over the majority, 60 some odd percent, mm. thought that uh, companies were practicing greenwashing just so they could look uh, you know, cool or be uh, you know, part of the trend uh, or look green or whatever when they're not really, that's their impression, that's their sure. perception. Mm -hmm. So they think those companies that are talking about what they're really doing are in that same bag for them. Mm. That's not good. Mm. And uh, for the investors, it's even worse. Some 80-odd percent mm. of investors believe that the companies that they are investing in that say they're doing something about the environment or ESG really aren't. Mm. <laughs> so you have this uh, situation where people of the world don't believe companies that say they're doing something even when they're doing something. And this relates to the relationship of uh, ESG with branding. If uh, a company is using ESG practices that really relate to their brand, mm -hmm. well, it's easier for a consumer to believe that. It because makes sense. They're it. Yeah, they're seeing it. It relates to their brand, and uh, that's, it's easier for them to do. Uh, and uh, that means that um, uh, greenwashing is lessened. Uh, that can affect uh, the, uh, the perception of greenwashing, which causes more people to be encouraged to do something about uh, ESG because they're getting some benefit from it. Consumers today want brands to do more than just sell them stuff. ESG is not so much about what to do, it's about what to avoid. So it's not so much a matter of cost, it's a matter of intent. What is brand to you? So if a, a Vietnamese client here in Vietnam asks you to consult them with their branding strategy and ask you to help them greenwash, what would you say to them? No. Yeah. Mm. But I'd explain why. Yep. I want to hear that. Well, uh, if a company is, uh, is greenwashing, it's kind of like 
you and me are friends, right? And I tell you a lie. What does that do to our friendship? Breaking. Right? Breaks it, yeah. right? It's, it's worse for a brand. Maybe you and I could uh, get over that. But for a brand, that changes the whole perception of the company. Mm. So it isn't just that they've lost the argument about this greenwashing practice. Uh, they've lost the game. You could say, oh, they're just lying. Right? Mm-hmm. I'm going to go somewhere else. Mm. Consumers today want brands to do more than just sell them stuff. Mm. They want to know that they're, they're good citizens. Okay, then it's mm. all going back to the core uh, thing, which is the brand strategy. Yeah. At the beginning, when you want to do ESG practice, you have to do it. Yeah. Right now with our brands, uh, we are already uh, making ESG part of the initial research that we do for a brand. Mm-hmm. That's just, we're not asking, hey, should we include this? We're doing that for the brand. That's part of... Uh, right from the beginning. Right from the beginning. Uh, and then that's part of the analysis that goes into creating a differentiation strategy. Mm. Uh, brands that already have uh, ESG uh, practices in place, mm-hmm. uh, we want to know, of course, what, uh, what they are as well. Sure. That's back to choosing ESG practices that fit the particular brand strategy that you have. Mm. If we're developing a new brand, uh, it's to, uh, to learn what e- ESG practices uh, uh, might fit uh, with the, uh, the persona mm-hmm. uh, or, or something like that. You emphasize a lot um, about choosing the right ESG practices that Mm. relate to the business strategy. So how do companies choose the right practice? How do they know which practice that are related to the business strategy? Well, they have to have a clear idea of what their brand strategy is first. Okay. And uh, when, when, when you know that, you have this practice and you figure out, well, in what way does that relate to our particular brand? Mm. There's no clear answer of, okay, well, this works and that works. and It'll be different for different companies. Mm. It'll be more consistent within a segment. Mm. And that's why we were doing this, uh, these uh, nine segments to find out what practices were kind of clustered in one segment rather than another. Mm. One thing a brand could do is uh, say, oh, okay, well, there's another brand that's using uh, that ESG practice. It, it must be good for the segment. Uh, we'll, we'll do that also. That's better than nothing, uh, but it may not be relevant to the segment because there's, w- what we found is a lot of them are not. Mm-hmm. And uh, there was a question in my, our mind, too, as to whether it would be possible to develop um, a unique uh, practice uh, ESG practice yeah. by themselves. Yep. So, can they can they do that? Well, we found they can. Mm. Uh, what we did is those same companies that uh, we went back to to analyze uh, what ESG practices they had, mm. and to see uh, whether they related to their company. Mm. We also said, okay, well, let's try to make a new one mm. that does okay. relate to their brand. Mm. And so we've had brainstorming sessions. Uh, on these companies that we've looked at Mm -hmm. uh, to see what kind of uh, ESG practice uh, would relate to their particular, not only their segment, Mm -hmm. uh, but also their particular brand strategy. And we have been able to do that. Mm -hmm. And we then carried it a step further and uh, brainstormed um, a brand communication uh, campaign Mm -hmm. uh, that relates to uh, that ESG factor. Mm -hmm. And we can do that as well. Uh, that's common advertising practice, you know, to do brainstorming, come up with concepts, yeah. communication concepts. There's not much difference about uh, doing that for uh, ESG, except that there's this huge body of people that don't believe anything you're going to say mm. about uh, ESG. Mm-hmm. So uh, in, in that sense, uh, what you do about uh, marketing communication uh, for ESG is not so much about what to do. It's about what to avoid. Oh, okay. Then what to avoid then? Well, it's, uh, you know, fancy packages that look like they're, you know, (laughs) 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 they're natural when they're not. uh, Okay. um, um, Stretching the truth when it comes to uh, the SG practices you're engaged in. Uh, Recyclable packaging when... uh, (laughs) <laughs> the content is made with coal. <laughs> <laughs> those kinds of things. Okay. So is it costly to adopt those ESG practices? You'd think so, but it's not. 
If you have a budget and uh, you're going to be spending it for ESG practices in the same sense that a Vietnamese company would take, you know, for CS, uh, CSR, they're going to say, okay, we're going to do community good mm. uh, for this. Mm. Our budget for that is this. Whether you spend that on practices that don't really relate to your brand mm. or spend that same amount on practices that do relate to your brand, okay. the money is the same. What you're getting out of it is a lot more. Yeah. So it's not so much a matter of cost, it's a matter of intent. So I think it's now it's come back to the mindset, yeah. the way you think about it. The same thing could happen, the same amount of money that you spend, exactly. but now it's spending on ESG. This is uh, for these uh, uh, brands that have uh, parity products and services. This is really a big deal. Mm. It's so hard to find a, a way of differentiating a brand when the products and services themselves are not different. Yes. It's, and, it's very difficult. Mm. Here's a whole other avenue mm. where a company can invest in ESG practices mm. that they can get value out of. They can get communication value out of. Yeah. And that's real. That's something real they can do. Mm. It's a whole other dimension uh, that uh, uh, such brands can do f uh, to, uh, to gain advantage. I guess it's all come back to brand strategy and uh, you know what your brand is, then you can choose the right AIG practices that go, you know, relating to that brand. That's a criteria, so, yeah. a form of criteria. Yeah, the form of just as a criteria for choosing color or typefaces or anything like that. So I guess my question is all come back to brand, mm -hmm. because in, in Vietnam, sometimes the, the companies, they focus on doing product and services, but they kind of underestimate the importance of doing branding yeah. for, some, for some companies like that. I want to ask you, like, what is brand to you? It's, uh, it's an old concept, but yeah. I think it's uh, true. And that is a brand is like a person. It's a much uh, simpler version of a person mm. uh, because uh, a brand is expressed through personality traits. When we develop uh, a brand for a client, a brand strategy, uh, we look at all of their functional differences. Sometimes there's not a lot of them. And we also look at their emotional differences. Mm. And uh, from this, uh, we, we craft uh, something that can be uh, differentiated. Then we apply that uh, criteria to the development of you know, brand name verbally, brand name, uh, positioning phrase, uh, that's what we call a slogan, mm -hmm. uh, brand story, mm -hmm. uh, but especially visually, uh, the logo itself, uh, the typefaces that are used not for the, just for the logo, mm -hmm. uh, or may, maybe not even for the logo, uh, but uh, in day-to-day -day communication, typefaces have a quality to them, a quality of persona. Uh, mm. to them. Uh, color is uh, another uh, mm. communicator of uh, emotion. We look carefully at that and then apply that to all different kinds of media, mm. uh, from your business card to your billboard, uh, mm -hmm. every different kinds of media. We use that same criteria to say, okay, this is what we're doing. Uh, everything, uh, everything that's uh, going to be communicated mm -hmm. needs to fit that persona. Just like everything that you do fits uh, the integrity of who you are as a, as a person. If you do that, then you're getting double return from your investment in marketing communication. Mm. Uh, a good way of thinking about it is uh, tactical communication mm. follows the marketing plan, mm. uh, but brand communication follows the long-term strategy, image strategy plan. You can do both. Uh, not more money, mm. more effort. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, to uh, you can do both. But uh. I mean, if we look at the autumn markets, international markets, um, what kind of lesson can we learn from the, let's say, the ESG path, uh, mm -hmm. the development path of ESG in the developing country in Vietnam? If we look at the the other international mm -hmm. markets, how how does it gonna go to? It's just going to get uh, more and more consistent. Mm. Uh, more and more companies are going to be doing ESG, uh, not only because uh, they want to, uh, but because their consumers demand it. Mm. Uh, and in many countries, it's going to be like in the European Union right now, uh, it's going to be regulated. So they have to, they have they have to. to it, they have to do it. Mm. Uh, companies all over the world, uh, at some point in the future, uh, are going to be doing a lot more ESG uh, than they are right now because the planet is falling apart. <laughs> it's well, yeah, uh, the weather, the right weather patterns uh, kind of uniting everyone, 
the economic uh, crisis, all of these things are uh, affecting the way people mm -hmm. think about uh, what they do and what their companies do for them in ways that are uh, much uh, more intense than ever before. And I'll say this, uh, the companies that do bring uh, ESG standards uh, into their brand strategy mm. uh, are going to be ahead of the game. Mm. Uh, and they are going to be, uh, they're going to have a competitive edge uh, over their other uh, companies mm. uh, that uh, haven't yet figured that out. Mm. It's the same thing with branding. Uh, back uh, when uh, the doors of uh, WTO opened yeah. and all of these foreign companies came in with decades and decades of <laughs> branding experience and they were cleaning the clock of, uh, of Vietnamese companies. They caught on pretty fast. All right. That there was a crisis. Yeah. And that crisis brought on uh, much better uh, thinking about uh, the value of uh, sure. developing a brand image. The same thing is happening with uh, ESG. So, uh, yeah, let's round up this story. Um, we've been talking for one hour about this, mm. but if there are some, let's say, key takeaways that you want to tell the, the Vietnamese companies now in Vietnam who want to uh, practice ESG, uh, who's showing concern, uh, interest about this, but don't know where to begin. So one, what are some of the key takeaways that you can tell the Vietnamese companies? Uh, and you can do that very easily um, uh, in, on the internet. You just Google ESG and you're going to get a ton of information. I, I would give a plug to uh, uh, PricewaterhouseCooper, PwC, mm. uh, to get this uh, Vietnam Sustainability Report. Yep. Uh, I, it's free. I got it for free. Okay. Uh, and uh, that gives you a, a, a really good uh, overall picture. Uh, I'm, sh I'm sure the other uh, big four have uh, very good information uh, as well. Again, they're coming at this from you know finance-based point of view, but you'll see more also about the consumer attitudes, mm. uh, and uh, and so that's a point. And I'd say the, the the second point is when you're expending funds for ESG, the environment, society, uh, developing new uh, internal policies equate that with your brand strategy. Mm -hmm. You won't be able to do it with everything that we weren't able to, mm -hmm. but we were able to do it with a significant uh, enough practices uh, that would make a, uh, a brand impression uh, and would give uh, marketplace the idea that uh, you really care about mm -hmm. uh, what you're doing. And sometimes, yeah, they need to rethink about the brand strategy again, if they want to apply all of this. That's a different subject. Mm -hmm. Uh, if their brand strategy fits them right now, mm. uh, but ESG is not a component of it, that's not necessarily a reason to change your brand strategy. Mm. That's a way to, to change your attitude about what ESG practices you're spending money on. Thank you so much, Richard. Thank you. I guess- uh, Thank you. <laughs> yeah, uh, we can talk about this all day. Uh, it's a rising trends for Many, many Vietnamese companies, um, like Richard said, uh, start learning and choose the right ESG practices that relate to your branding strategy. Uh, everybody's doing uh, a lot of greenwashing, but I guess the consequences is high. And uh, the consumer, we do have power to put pressure on corporations, on businesses, so they can change their attitude about doing ESG um, and integrate it to their branding strategy. Um, thank you so much for watching and uh, please subscribe to our channel, uh, The Success, for more episodes. We're gonna have a series on sustainability uh, soon on this channel. And uh, also follow us on different podcast platforms such as Spotify, uh, Apple Podcasts, and Google Podcasts. Uh, so you can listen to the conversations anytime. So one more time, thank you so much, Richard. Thank Appreciate you, Kay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah.